All right, guys, welcome back. It's Hybrid Spectre. Sorry this video has taken me so long to do. I've I started a new job and I've been busy with that alongside life in general. So, and I've been playing other things as well, so this has taken a lot longer to get out. I was in the middle of recording this one time, but then I just had made too many mistakes in the reading and uh my phone was getting spammed and whatnot. I was getting phone call after phone call after phone call, so that so that recordings have been so those recordings have been scrapped. So we're gonna start this whole new, fresh. So and I've actually had time to read through all of them. So I should know what to expect, and there should be less mistakes this time. So this is the lore book, the man they call Cade. Deal. All joking aside, maybe I've made mistakes. Maybe some more recently than others. Hard to believe, I know. But maybe it's true. Maybe. Here's the thing about mistakes. You learn from them. Again, this is assuming the theoretical concept of me having made some mistakes is true. So, yeah. Maybe that's what I'm doing. Trying to learn from these very hypothetical slip-ups. Turning inward, they call it. They being Ikora. Eris calls it something different. Eris calls a lot of things something different. I miss that girl. But here I am stalling, buying time. This ain't easy for me. Thought it would be. Easy, I mean. Or at least, easier than this. Thought a lot of things would be easier. Hell, thought a lot of things about a lot of things. But maybe that's what makes me the person I am. Makes any of us a part of humanity. All our big thoughts and plans, hopes and dreams, and all that squishy nonsense. Okay, fine. Look. If I'm playing at honesty, and I think that's what I'm doing here, maybe those hopes and dreams are all that really matters. <clears throat> Just not losing sight of them is the hard part. Life is full of those little distractions that fudge the lines, make those hopes and dreams a little blurrier. That's the power of maybes. I suppose the temptation of playing both ends against the middle. Maybes provide wiggle room. And I like my edges fudgy. And I loves me some wiggle room. But if I'm going to stay true to this whole rambling dear diary, how do you do business? Guess what I'm saying is... Guess what I'm saying is, I'm sick of maybes. If I'm a straight shooter, and I'm nothing if I'm not then I gotta shoot straight. Even when there ain't a gun in my hand. So let's... Let's keep this between me and you, okay? Here's the deal. My name is Kate Six, and this is my story. Call. Now, to be clear, yeah, the plan is to tell it like it is. But don't expect every little detail to play out. I'm gonna hit the important stuff, sure. But what I'm really after here is a sense of a... sense of me. Because once you understand me, you might just understand where I'm coming from. Why I do the things I do. And why I've done the things I've done. So read between the lines if you have to. But, end of the day, everything that matters should be readily apparent. If not, you're not paying attention. So here goes. Us Exos are haunted. Sounds ominous, I know. And maybe a bit of a stretch. But really, it's the best word. Kind of sets the stage in a way the raw facts don't. See, Guardians have all got past lives. But unless you returned with any definitive info on your person or in proximity, I'm looking at you, Bray. That past life, or lives, was, or were, wiped clean, gone, reborn in light, and all. You become what you become. Exos, though? We've got ghosts in our machines. Not capital G, open, open doors, and no things. Ghosts. I mean, like, fragments of, I don't know, pieces of something that could be memory. Whatever it is, it's enough to give us a starting point to maybe, possibly, imagine who we were before we became what we are. 
And then there's the dreams. But I ain't touching that with a 10-foot arc staff. Me? I'm one of the lucky few. The fudgy flashes of that old exo life weren't all I had to go on. See, the me that was in my life before my trusty capital G ghost found me kept journals, like mementos, fragments of my prior life that give me a baseline of who I was. The journals are personal, and I keep personal close to the chest. I've shared a few pages, sure, but only with the right-minded types who could find a little value in seeing the man behind the myth. Yeah, myth, I said it. Who are we kidding? You've heard him. <sighs> You've heard of me. Who hasn't? Point is, I don't make a show of personal business. First, because it's my fuel to burn. Second, because Big Blue ain't a big fan of Guardians poking around what they used to be. Something about duty, rules, not losing sight of why we were chosen. But more than any of that, most of us chosen ones don't have the luxury of a past, so rubbing it in doesn't seem right. Look, all I know is, when I rejoined the Land of the Living, the pre-light version of me was kind enough to lend a guiding hand. I took that hand, gave it a high five, and followed, ex and followed its example the best I could. All this time later, I may not know my true purpose. I leave the big ticket, existential questions to the warlocks. But I know this. My calling is to do good. Maybe not always to be good, you know, but do good. There's a difference. And if I don't always go about it in a manner that fits the textbook definition of hero or team player, I'm looking at you, Big Blue. Just know, I might dance to my own tune, but we're all at the same head and hoedown, or something like that. Gotta get some water. Mouth is getting dry. Oh, that's good. Alright. First steak. Made a deal with myself long ago. If people need help, I and I could do the helping, I would. So I do. Yeah, when that help returns a bit of loot or goodwill my way, all the better. But there's never been a cash I robbed or a stash I hid that didn't offer something to those in need. Not many people know that. Fine by me. I don't like to brag. True, I never wanted the Vanguard's life. But that's not because I didn't see its value. Just that its value fit others better than me. Besides, few can do what I do. Hell, few would even try. I mean, come on. It's me. The places I've been, the trouble I've seen, caused, whatever, was a time Shiro and all the crew and me would do more good doing bad than the mightiest titan ever dreamed. The trails we blazed, the supplies we recovered, pilfered, filched, scammed, stole, found, uncovered, looted, we weren't the only ones, but the world outside the city got a whole lot bigger thanks to us. Yeah, sure, I don't get out as much, but I'm fixing to change that. Zavala won't like it, never does. Ikora will try to convince me otherwise, always does. But we've seen how precious our light is, how fleeting. Gotta use it while we got it. Do good, be good, push the limits, take back what's ours. And that was my first bet. All in, day one, I bet on myself. I saw the edge of those dark ages. You've heard the stories. If not, look them up. Scary stuff. Real eye-opener. I've seen the city grow and fall and grow again. Stronger. I've seen the best of us. The worst. And I'll fight to ensure we stick around long enough to see that best turn to, to better. And that worst fade to memory. Oh yeah. I'm a loudmouth and a braggart. And I'm quick with a blade and fast on the draw. And if you need it found, fought, killed, saved, or stashed for safekeeping, few can do it better. But in the end, I'm only good because he was good. I like to think I learned that from myself. That the notes left by me, me that was before me, set the stage. 
that five figured back in back in those day back in those dark days that six might not turn out all that nice and end up a seven so that former me wrote me a road map to the version of him or me that would be a better man so whatever hand i was dealt when the bet was placed and it was and it was time to call no matter what i had an ace and a queen up my sleeve meaning i couldn't lose meaning the better man would always win. Fold. Ever heard of Andal Brask? He should have. One of the old heroes, before Black Gardens and Hive Gods and that cabal-shaped mess we just cleaned up. Yeah, he was something. Hunter part of the Vanguard before yours truly. More importantly, he was my friend. A brother, even. Andal and I used to run with one heck of a crew. This was before he got himself roped into fire teaming up with the top brass. Oh, we were legendary. Rant scouting parties looking for survivors to lead back city side. Mapped lost sites where old tech and supplies might still be worth the salvage. Hunted plenty of fallen. Never an easy task, especially in the early days. And by early days, I mean my early days. A lot of Guardians been around longer than me, but even in my newborn new life, the city had a lot of growing up to do. And us Guardians had a hell of a lot to learn. Trouble is, we only ever seemed to learn the hard way. The Red War, that time Crota woke up cranky and slept around more Guardians than I can count, Twilight Gap, and all that bad that happened before my time, the Iron Lords and their tussle with Siva, Six Fronts. And those are just the headline grabbers. So many lessons learned, so many lives lost. But in truth, I've always felt it's the day-to-day -day struggles where we learn the most about the world, about ourselves. Being inside the city walls, sure, we're reminded of what we're fighting for, but outside the walls? It puts a face to all we've lost, puts a reality to how far we've fallen. Abandoned roads, crumbling cities, rust and ruin, ruin and rust. But if the city gives us reason to fight for the now, those old dead places always give me hope for tomorrow. Rusted broken skeletons or not, if you squint, you can see all we were and all we can be. And that's why when Andal left the road and joined the, and joined the vanguard, me and the crew hoped he'd get the others, Osiris, Zavala, even the speaker, to see what we saw. The city was a refuge, yeah, but if we hid too long, let all we'd lost get picked apart by pirates and warmongers, we'd lose our humanity, just like we lost Andal. I have to drink some water here, my mouth is super dry. All right. Flop. I play nice with the Vanguard now, but it wasn't always that way. Not that we were enemies, we just tended to see things through a different lens. But Andal? Playing nice was his forte. He was always more. I think diplomatic is the word. Our big play back in the day was get the Vanguard to loosen their leash. Let us explore. Let us lead a new era of expansion. The riches of the system would be ours. Ours, as in everybody's, of course. Though we'd get our cut. In hindsight, we were way too ambitious. Didn't see it in the light at the time. But then again, you never do. When Andal joined the Vanguard, he was our inside man. It was a sweet deal. He would drop intel on new stashes or fallen movements, and Shiro and I would jump the gun, hit him first, claim what we could, and deliver the rest of the city. Maybe we skimmed a little off the top, nothing excessive, just a finder's fee. Probably shouldn't be putting all this out there for anyone to judge. What's the statute of limitations on misspent youth? Whatever, long time ago. But it speaks to what I'm getting at. I always tried to do right, even if I occasionally got sidetracked. And all joining the Vanguard was a gift in some ways, a bummer in others. More importantly, we, he'd made a deal, given his word to me, to himself, when we took the dare. I won. He lost. 
So he left the road, joined the big, joined the big wigs up in, up in the vanguard, and he reminded me of a lesson I've always known, but every now and then would forget. You give your word, you keep it. But the longer Andal was up in the tower, caged, my word, never his, the more he saw things the vanguard's way. Looking back, he was only ever doing the right thing. Seeing him changed and, in truth, grow as a guardian and as a person. I've never admitted this. I thought less of him. My best friend, my closest ally, all because he stuck to his word, accepted the dare, and even when he came up on the bad end, he never wavered from doing exactly what he said he'd do. Join the damn vanguard. Leave me and Shiro to have all the fun. I thought he was a sucker. Turns out, the only sucker was me. This guy better stop inviting me. Raise. In case you can't tell, I ain't the best storyteller. I can be. Boy, howdy, can I rip a yarn. Don't believe me. Ask CC. I'm sorry. Don't believe me? Ask CC. Don't believe him? Ask the Colonel. Those two have heard things you wouldn't believe. Just that this... What I'm doing here, the whole based on a true story thing, I can feel myself trying to talk around what I want to say, fill it in with the old pooping circumstance. I'm trying though, fighting my better angels to get what I need to say. And what I need to say starts with Andal. Andal and the dare. My dare. Our dare. The hunter's dare. It's a stupid thing, but it's an honor thing. And it cost me my friend. I cost me my friend. But before the dare, we had Tanix. Hell, after the dare, we had Tanix. After my dare, we had Tanix. Always comes back to Tanix, don't it? For the uninitiated, Tanix is a fallen mercenary with no house, but the house that pays him. Most fallen won't deal with him, but when a captain or an archon or a kel needs something done and their crews ain't cutting it, or when they want a job done real hush-hush, they call Tanix. Back in the day, me, Shiro, and Andal and a few others got on radars we'd rather stay off. The fallen houses put out bounties. A lot of glimmer on our heads. A lot of ether. Tanix took the gig. Only we didn't know. There'd been stories of a renegade fallen dropping bodies, but nothing ever concrete. So we just brushed them off as more of the same. Nothing we couldn't handle. Even on an off day. I mean, we were all aware the fallen were dangerous. Big time threat each day, every day. But a solitary fallen boogeyman, free of house, cutting down guardians one by one? <laughs> yeah, right. Until, yeah, right, was standing in front of us. First impression? He was a big boy. Bad attitude. Second? He was standing over the body of Nyan Rue. Didn't know her well, but we done a few runs. That day was supposed to be an in and outer, but then Tanix. Nyan never got back up, and Shiro's boy Lush lost his ghost. Full on RTL, returned to light, gone and done. The whole scene was a blur. Lost our haul, hauled our butts out of there. Still not sure how we lost Tanix and his boys. Just lucky we did. Of course, ditching that troublemaker wasn't the end. Shiro and I got back, filled Andal in on what went down as soon as we found him. This was before his vanguard days. He'd been running a second grab on a cash out west, wasn't back till the next night. We told him about Nyan. Lush was freaking out about his ghost. Couldn't blame him. Still can't. Then we, then we did the dumb thing. We got cocky. Turn. Tanix didn't announce himself. Didn't say a word. Just laughed a few times and tried like hell to kill us. But we knew it was him. The stories matched the story, you know? Which meant the boogeyman had a face. The, uh, the boogeyman was real. We couldn't hunt. We could hunt real. We could track real. We could end real. Andal said something like, The hunter is about to become the hunted at the hands of the hunters he'd hunted. I know. Don't laugh. I didn't. He was a great guy. 
even if his humor was a bit forced. Seems like a nice way to put it. But he wasn't wrong. Lush wanted to join up, a little payback for his little light. But we nixed that. Loved that kid, but no ghost meant no way. Poor fella died his final death, RTL. Less than a cycle. Later, we went on a, we went on a solo. We went on a run solo. Didn't tell anyone, never came back. Shiro used to spin stories about him. Still does. Like he's still out there, living a life we could only dream of. Traveling unknown roads, digging up untold treasures. My favorite's the one about the Rat King. How Lush joins up with a folk tale, and together they fight the wars we don't see. It's just a fantasy, but I like it. It's the kind of bedtime story I used to tell Ace as he was fighting off sleep. When he was here. But he's not here. Neither is Lush. Neither is Andal. And someday, neither will I. Didn't have a hunter vanguard back then. What with Calco, Swift River, finally being declared dead after two years, MIA, and his dare nowhere to be found. Speaker said it was on the rest of us hunters to figure it out. The first night back, Andal and I were up late. Not a new thing. He drank. I drank. He got tanked. I'm a robot. And we made the pact. Dare issued and accepted. See, there was that opening on the vanguard, hunter slot. We both wanted Tanix. Only one would get the killing blow and the glory. The loser had to hang him up and lock themselves away in a tower. Leave the lonely roads to real dealers. We both laughed. Wow. I wish I could hear him laugh again. Just once. Funny how all the cool kids leave the party too soon. All in. Hey, kid. I know I don't write you very often. I know I don't write you very often, you know? But it's better than never. Ain't easy for me to find the words, I mean. It is. I find them. But I know they're not always the right ones. Too much flash. Too much looking out for how I'm looking. Not enough just telling it how it is. That's why I'm doing this, Ace. That's why you and me are having these words. Easier to say them than scrawl them. This way, now that I'm doing it, it feels more honest if I'm being... Feels more true. Thing is, and I'm sorry it's like this, but I can only talk to you in my mind. In my heart. This is how one-to-one -one works now. Father and son. Cade and his firecracker ace. What am I doing? Reality is, ain't no telling who I'm talking to. Hell, I could be me. The me after me. Hi, me. Looking good. Sorry you can't remember all you can't remember. That's just an exo's lot in life. Though, if you are me, sitting on that other side, I gotta tell you, I never wanted this. You never wanted this. I made it real clear to the Big Z, to Ikora, Banshee, Amanda, my pal Jimmy down at the ramen shop, that if anyone ever finds that deep stone crypt thingy, I stopped counting at six. No higher. You hear me? No higher. Think there's just something about the number seven that gives me the heebie-jeebies. Unlucky. Overrated. I don't know. Just a number with a bad mojo in my book. So if you've got a seven in tow or above, someone's changed the game. Someone's not playing nice. Might want to do something about that. If you haven't listened to the earlier fi files, the start of this ramble, find him. Hear him. You might not want to take lessons from an unknown reflection, but trust me, whatever kind of man you are, you can be better. Also, there are journals. Don't call them a diary. A three-eyed gal with a preference for deep holes and nightmares always call them diaries. Don't take cues from her. Anyway, end of the day, new me, if that's you, you get to choose who and how you want to be. The hope is maybe I can guide you a bit, like the me before me did. 
And when you get to the part about the kid and the girl, my ace and my queen, they're yours too, by right, because they are all yours, a gift. And you'll be better for it. And if you don't feel that thing, that soft spot in the middle of all that circuitry, when you get to them, then if you are me, if you aren't like me at all, and that, and that means you're trouble. The good kind, or the bad, impossible for me to know. All I can do is give you the tools to raise you right. That goes for you too, Ace, if you're listening. Hell, if it goes for anyone. Strangers, old friends, new enemies. Learn from me. Be better than me. Because I'd really hate to think whoever you are is someone I wouldn't get along with. River. Honor? It's tricky. Means different things to different folks. Like, keep your word. Well, your word's your word. You give it. You keep it. Do that, regardless of all the rest, and that's honor right there. And let me tell you, kid. Honor matters. It's a weapon in its own right, and a shield. Zavala knows. Ikora knows. Saladin and Shax, they'd probably know a little too much. All the best guardians know. People trust your word. They'll trust you. And trust? It's, a hard, it's hard to come by, and easy to lose. Give your word. Keep your word. And when all else fails, you'll find you have friends there to pick up the slack. Even if you don't, you find, you find yourself all alone. Odds stacked, final curtain set to drop, at least you can go out knowing you did the right thing when it was asked. Now, don't get me wrong. The right thing, like honor, can be a malleable concept. It shifts and bends. I'm getting poetic here. Waxen warlock, we call it. Not my intent. But sometimes, I can see the value in their thinking. Their way with words. Ah, look at that. There's another lesson. Find value in another. I don't have much in common with a ramrod titan or a floofy warlock. But that's the key. Showdown. Back to Honor. Back to Andal. Andal was my brother. Figuratively, but I find more often than not the family you unearth along the way is more real than the family you thought was the never mind. Andal was my brother, period. Tanix was the four armed murdering guardian hunter who yeah. Andal and I, we made a bet. Only bet ain't the right word. Not among hunters. What we did meant more. We offered a dare. The dare. I to him, him to me. Kill Tanix or get chained to vanguard duty. Hunt the hunter and come out on top. To wear a leash. This was our honor. Our word. The hunter dare dates back to nobody knows when. There were all kinds of stories about the first dare. But there's no way to discern the truth of a thing done by who knows when by who knows whom. It was the first dare that time a hunter. Oh, and mind you, this is way before anyone even imagined calling themselves hunters or titans or warlocks. This was the Ryzen days. The Chosen weren't organized back then. No code and didn't get it. No matter how much their ghosts talked their ears off, back when the first ones got their spark lit, they were just as likely to be self-involved tyrants as a decent human being. Ask me to tell you about the warlords sometime. <laughs> bunch of newly res tough guys misusing the light like a bunch of ignore muses. Rami. Uh, regardless. Not a fan. But who is? Am I rambling? Anyway. The first challenge of honor between those who'd one day call themselves hunters. Was it the Tuval Valley jump? Shade Runner sprint? The Moonlight Draw, Kuba Sewell's Last Stand, The Great Scrounge Hunt, The Lesser Scrounge Hunt, no one knows. I sure as heck don't. But which was first don't matter. They all were first. They were all the dare to set the table and inspire other dares. What matters is once a dare was offered, it was taken. 
it was took. It was on you. It was in you. Not metaphysically. I'm not talking warlock hocus pocus. I'm talking honor. Accepting the dare is giving your word. So Andal and I, we offered, accepted, and doomed ourselves Because we didn't take into account the depths of my arrogance. Seems my arrogance is where it all falls apart. Winner take all. Tanix was a pain. Turns out that wasn't the real problem, though it was a hot, though it was high on the list at the time. The real problem, the freak's still a pain. He ain't no guardian, but the dude's been dead and not more times than I can track. Died twice by my hand alone. Second time I even looked to deliver some insurance, but he was hauled off by his goons before I could add more lead to the collection I deposited in his chest, and head, and gut. And head. Messed up there. But that second time don't matter. I mean, it does, sure. But the important bit here is our first go-round. When Andal and I made our bet that wasn't a bet but really a dare, the dare, we were eager and ready to track Tanix and hit him with some payback. I had the good luck of, fi I had the good luck of finding Tanix first. Had the good luck to kill him, too. So I thought. So we all thought. What followed was a party. Osiris even showed up. He and the speaker had sent Saint-14 after Tanix as well. And maybe Saint he's one hell of a titan, but we're hunters. No way we were losing the kill. Looking back, I wish maybe we had. Andal kept his word. Joined the, uh, joined the vanguard. I tried talking him out of it. We made the dare in a compromised state. Shiro and I had just been roughed up, Nyan was gone, Lush was broken, motions were high, liquid was flowing. Andal, Andal wasn't buying it, neither was I. Not really. The dare's the dare. To back out would have been a mark. Would have been a mark. Would have called Andal into question to every hunter out there, even to me. I never would have admitted it to him, but he'd know. Things got a little weird between us once he joined the vanguard. All my doing, and I missed him. Didn't like seeing one of the best rule breakers and world walkers anyone had ever seen bogged down with bureaucrats. But the weirdness passed. Brothers don't stay mad at each other. That's just the way it is. As we settled into the new norm, the good times started to roll. They kept on rolling too. For a while, anyway. Dog, get out. Bluff. I don't play well with, I don't play well with loss. I just don't. It's something I tend to avoid actively. It's weird, but that's where my queen comes in. And before you make a reef joke or mention that witch and her witches or her mopey little brother, don't. My queen is not that queen. My queen is love. My queen is my heart. My queen is hard to explain. She is my memory of love. My understanding of it. Only exists through her. But she's not here. She's long gone. So I cling to the feeling I get when imagining her. And when I don't, I am oh so content. But it's a struggle. We lose so much in this life. Any life. All lives, really. But this, the last safe city, end of all things kind of life... Even when we win, it seems like all we do is lose. Scratch that. I don't believe that. If there's one thing I'm not, it's defeatist. I mean, I defeat. I definitely defeat. One might even say defeating things is my job. One of my jobs. One of many. What's not my job is pessimism. Just not my thing. I'm a high-octane optimist. And nothing but hugs. Mostly. Not always. Always gets annoying. But mostly, I'm the life of the party. Not that you could tell from all this woe-is-me soul-bearing I've been laying on the thick for. For, what, 11 entries now? 10? In fact, at this point, if you're still listening, you're a braver soul than I. But where was I? Oh yeah, optimism. I'm full of it. Amongst other things, if certain unnamed individuals are to be believed. But yeah... Each new day, 
we're here, each new day we're here is one heck of a reward. Heck of a win. And if we should own that, enjoy it, embrace it, but never take it for granted. <laughs> Had a warlock friend who used to say, take it for granted. <laughs> like the rock, like G-R-A-N-I-T-E. Smartest guy I've ever known. But maybe he wasn't, you know, for granted. <laughs> Almost as dumb as his catchphrase. Come on, Gage, stay on target. Each new day, hell of a thing. Embrace it. Enjoy it. But never forget, it's a hard life. And when friends fall, when brothers fade, when you're queen, when, when we lose the things that matter, well, a lot of people can use that. Own it. That pain. That loss. They find a way to motivate, to celebrate. For all my charms, seeing the good in, in the gone ain't one. For all my charms, seeing the good in the gone ain't one. And my queen helps me through that. Because I believed she was something special. She was good. She had to be. And I, yeah, I do. So damn much. When others I've lost along the way start to weigh me down, I think of her. And she just overwrites everything else. <laughs> That's how strong her pull is, and that's how big the hole she left is. Massive. It devours. She swallows all other bad things. Not sure if it's healthy, the way I deal with loss, but it's my way. It's what works for me, and it makes me happy. Thinking of her makes me happy. And the loss fades away. bad beat been trying hard to give you a sense of what matters to me but also to find a way to talk about the things that uh that scare me thing really singular and that thing is loss losing i'm a poor loser i admit it i run from it full speed others don't others accept it but everything i said about my queen is true she is my shield she is also a lie. I don't know when I made her up. Or better, I don't know when I decided to believe in a life I don't know and can never truly own. Was it during this life? Was my rebirth as a guardian or the void of everything I was before? What drove me to invent comfort? Possible, even likely, but I'm not sure. I do have flashes of memories of the life I had before I was a guardian, but that's all they are. Flashes. Quick flickers of people and places in my dreams, or in that space between a bullet and getting rezzed. I see a woman there, and she's all I've ever known, of a life long since gone. I feel love for her. Is that love a memory, or am I simply loving the memory? I convinced myself of the former. I've concocted a truth to make myself whole. The kid, the woman, I do not own them. They are not real. But I wish they did, but I wish I did. And I wish they were. They're just two best cards I could find to keep up my sleeve. When the odds were stacked against me, I made them real in my mind and in my heart. I fell in love with the idea of them and I crafted a truth that allowed me to feel. In truth, it was selfish. When I came to for the first time, I was so al I felt so alone, broken. My ghost tried to comfort me, but this life felt hollow, so I ran. But the flashes, like daydreams, they promised something more, something other than suffering and war. So I clung to them, and I built my truth, and it made me a better man. Some would dispute that fact. Some would say, a good man who lies to himself is good only because he hides from the truth. But I disagree. I think in this world, you need to find what is best in you and cling to it. That's all I did. I found what moved me, and I fought for it. Without Ace, and without my queen to listen to me, to hear me, to see me, there's no telling who I would have become. 
but I know. And I know there's a chance it wouldn't have been very nice. So that's what I'm offering to you here. A chance. Look at my life. Look at the things I've said. The things I've done. See how the promise of a simpler life and true, pure love, even if it was all just a game, see how it drove me, directed me. Now go find your own. I know this confession isn't as clean as you may like, but then again, it's not a confession. It's a warning. Find the path to your best self and walk it, because the alternative is a lonely road. Don't you ever forget that. Otherwise, I may just have to come back and kick your ass. See you later, pal. Kate Six. So, that was the lore book, The Man They Call Cade. So, that was a bit of a, a little bit of an emotional roller coaster. I mean, I'm not one for emotion, but that does tug at your heartstrings a little bit. So, sorry this took so long to do. Life got in the way and other things as well. So, yeah. So, that's The Man They Call Cade. Uh, let's see. What other lore books are we close to? Most Loyal seems pretty interesting from what I've read of it. Law of the Frontier, yeah, we've already done that one. Ghost Stories, there's a lot of these. There's a lot of these, so we might we may not be getting to this one for a while. That one, still working on finding that one. Dreaming City, that's gonna take a while. But I have a feeling I have to do um I have to do the um blind well for those. Woken of the Reef, that's gonna well whew, man, we may have to make that one a two part. But I'm missing one there, so we'll see what happens with that one. We're very close to completing the Drifter's Gambit. I'm only missing one. so But I'm not quite sure how to get that one, though. So we'll just have to see what happens with that one, though. But that's the only one I'm missing. So if I can complete that one, we're definitely going to get into the Drifter's Gambit. So Wall of Wishes, that requires the raid. So we'll see what happens there. The Forsaken Prince. Got a little ways to go for that one. Only missing about three, so so whichever one we finish first will be the next one that we read. So we'll see what happens. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys in the next one.